Wow. <laughs> what a day. What a day, everyone. A shocking news. It looks like a Hunter Biden may not be off the hook after all. That plea deal. That plea deal is not happening. The judge needs more information good for her. It's nice to see that maybe we can get a little justice out there, right? Because sometimes you start to think to yourself, wow. This is one rigged system. And by the way, it is in, in many, many ways. And we can talk about that. But a little bit of heartening news in that a U.S. district judge actually wants some more information before signing off on this quote unquote plea deal with Hunter Biden. We're going to get into all of it, all of it. You know what? We got we got tons of news here because Mitch McConnell as well. Everybody's talking about impeachment. Can Mitch McConnell come through with these impeachment charges? Well, can Mitch McConnell get through the day? My goodness. I mean, this is very concerning what just happened there on Capitol Hill. I'm going to show you the tape. And Ron DeSantis laying off a third of his staff, plunging in the polls. And it's no wonder. Have you seen the memes his staff has been making? I mean, this is bad, bad stuff. You're running to the right of Trump and you think that's going to work, DeSantis? Good luck. Plus, oh, <laughs> we got an interesting update on um, the whole alien thing, really strange testimony happening there on Capitol Hill. We're going to talk about that. i got to play the sound. Welcome, everyone. So good to have you here on the show. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Do me that favor. We are live today. I'm looking at all your comments coming in. Wonderful to see you. Wonderful to see some new faces. Wonderful to see the familiar faces. Again, live program right here. I encourage you to hit the bell and to also subscribe to the channel. Or if you're watching on Facebook, do that there. We also have a podcast on Apple. Apple on Apple Podcasts. I would love to have you there if you could do me the favor of subscribing, following the show. And hey, if you're so inclined, maybe even leave a review. Lots to discuss. We are brought to you in part today by LegacyPMInvestments.com. 1 866 589 0560. We're going to talk about Fed hikes a little later on. So we'll talk about gold in relation to that. But this is the place if you're interested in investing in gold or silver, you can do it online or you can call them directly. Okay. The big news today, it turns out that, you know, you don't always get a pass in life. Imagine that, Hunter Biden. Just because your dad's the president doesn't mean everybody's going to sign off on your plea deal. This plea deal, from the very beginning, I told you it was totally nuts. I mean, look, I'm not a lawyer, but I know enough about business. I know enough about taxes. I know enough about the IRS to know that, you know what, if you're trying to get away with skirting some oh, reported $1.7 million worth of taxes that you should have paid, you know what? You're going to have problems. Everybody else has problems. I mean, there's a guy in New Jersey, the Wall Street Journal just reported on this. In, uh, in New Jersey, he had like a Linden auto shop. And guess what? He just got a year and a day in jail for exactly what they were going after Hunter Biden for. So why would Hunter Biden, if he was, you know, cooking the books, so to speak, and not paying his federal income taxes, why would he just get a little slap on the wrist. And by the way, why was that whole gun charge like put in there as well? Kind of confusing, right? Well, the judge admitted that. She's like, why is it that there are these two things sandwiched together? And she said, look, I need more time. I need to review this. We're very happy that she said that. And she's willing to do that because it, it gives you a little bit more faith in the system. I'll tell you, when, when you're, you're getting the you know what kicked out of you in terms of your faith in the system. The trust deficit is so significant in this country right now in terms of how we think about our media, how we think about the White House, how we think about everybody in Congress. It's important to know that maybe a few judges actually want to get their facts straight before signing off on something. So look, it, Hunter Biden is a disaster. I feel very sorry for the president that that is his son. I don't know quite how he was raised, but, you know, I'm sure everybody wishes the outcome was different. But it doesn't change the fact that the guy has been making oodles of money. I mean, like a lot of money, right? Like the what, 60 grand a month he was getting for sitting on the board of an energy company in Ukraine, Burisma, natural gas company. He knew nothing about the natural gas industry. What was he really trading on there? One has to wonder, what is he trading on, by the way, with all this art? Those questions are coming up in a massive way. We have details on them because one woman in particular who bought some of this art wound it up with a nifty appointment, a commission appointment. I mean, is this in fact pay to play? That's what Republicans are trying to get to the bottom of. 
And I, I want to be careful in terms of our allegations. We always want to be careful. But listen, this doesn't really look good. I mean, this is a kid. <laughs> kid, he's older than me. This is a guy who doesn't have a whole lot of talent, who has, has had repeated run-ins with drug issues, who, by the way, became a subject of an investigation because the IRS was looking into an international amateur pornography ring. I mean, that's how they came to Hunter. Think about that in and of itself, right? Like, I don't even like having to say these words. It's so, ugh. And so the IRS started investigating for that reason and then came up with, oh my gosh, like maybe he didn't reportedly pay taxes on some, oh, they're estimating some $17.5 million worth of income. How does this guy have that much income? I mean, they've got to prove it all, right? And that's a big part of what's going on right now. The House Oversight Committee is like, oh, yeah, yeah, he has all this income because it's coming from China and it's coming from Ukraine. And they're making a lot of accusations. But let's get back to just the facts in the case right now, which is that you have whistleblowers that came forward from, from the IRS, Gary Shapley being one of them, saying, hey, you know what? This is not normal. Like, normally, you would go through a certain course of action. But David Weiss, the attorney who interestingly was kept on from the Trump administration because they wanted to look a OK, he was not allowed, according to Shapley, to pursue these charges because Merrick Garland was in the way. So if that's the case, what's really happening? And isn't it kind of important that this judge, this U.S. district judge, not just fold, but say, hey, wait a second. We need to have some more information here because Mary Ellen Norica, that's her name, U.S. District Judge, is saying, you know, why, does, why are these things all together? And this is sort of highly unusual. And I need more time and I need more information. And I'm not going to sign off on this. So the plea deal, the little slap on the wrist could turn into something more. And this may mean he's not off the hook in terms of justifying whatever else was going on with China and with Ukraine. I mean, we know about the board position. We know, of course, about um, some text messages, and I'm going to share that with you, which suggest, oh, daddy might have known a little bit more than he's letting on. The White House is changing its tune on that. We're going to get to that too. But really and truly, I think that you've got to be asking some questions here. I mean, hey, let's be honest. If this were a Republican kid, ooh, there would be all kinds of questions being asked right now as we speak, right? That's just kind of how it works. You know, um, the uh, semantics, interestingly enough, have changed in recent days over at the White House because, you know, in the past, Karine Jean-Pierre, who's the spokesperson there, she's not necessarily the best. I think we all know that. She's a sweet lady, sweet lady. In fact, she used to come on my show on Fox quite a bit well, because, you know, she was liberal and she was willing to come on. It wasn't always easy to get liberals to come on. Uh, but I, she never could defend her arguments. She just never, ever, ever, ever. And that was like the one thing I would feel bad because she was she was sweet and she was attractive and she had a lovely voice. And she was a Democrat. And I was happy. Listen, I, I, I enjoy being able to talk to all sides. So I appreciate her coming on. But it's like, come on, come on. Don't you have something better to say? Can't you like emphasize and articulate your point a little bit better because, you know, it's not really fair <laughs> up against me, right? So I, I, I do not think that she's really the right person for that job. It's a tough job. Sometimes you have to kind of, you know, dance around the issues. And Pemperbit Patty was kind of good at this, being able to kind of like, you know, outsmart the reporters. They're asking this and you have to kind of change the question and make it that. Anyway, poor Corinne Jean-Pierre was asked some questions about why they're changing their tune. In other words, in the old days, just a few weeks ago, the White House was saying Joe Biden, the president, knew nothing about his son's business, nothing about his endeavors, had nothing to do with it. But of course, now that's coming into question in part because of this, take a peek, this is the text, this is the smoking gun text in which... Hunter Biden wrote to an associate, somebody who was working with in China, who just happened to be, by the way, friends with the head of intelligence gathering in China. He said, sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment has not been fulfilled. He's talking about money. Tell the director that I would like this resolved right now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And see, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than Yu Zhang or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me 
and my ability to hold a grudge forever that you will regret not following my direction. Okay, so that kind of seems a little much. Um, anyway, Corinne Jean-Pierre is getting asked about this change in tune because it used to be, okay, the president didn't have anything to do with his son's business. Now she's saying something a little bit different, a little bit nuanced. Listen carefully to this audio of the reporter asking why there is this change in language to not having anything to do with it, to not knowing anything about it. Um, well, interesting, watch. Months ago, you said that nothing has changed when you were asked about the president's previous remarks on his son's business dealings, but the language has in fact changed. So I just wanna clear this up once and for all. The president has previously said that he has never discussed overseas business dealings with his son, but the White House now says that the president has never been in business with his son. So why the updated language? Which statement is true? Or is this semantics and they're both true? Uh, as I stated on Monday, when I was asked this question multiple times, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed so on this. Nothing true. has changed on this. Uh, and so you could ask me a million different ways uh, on this question. Nothing has changed. <laughs> Yeah, except now everything's kind of falling apart right there in your face, including that plea deal that Hunter was supposed to get. You know, when most people, if they were to just not pay their taxes, would actually wind up in jail. Remember Leona Helmsley? Famous, famous case. She wasn't declaring all her income. Look, you don't mess with the IRS, all right? Like, there's like a few things that you need to know about. Hunter Biden, I'm sorry, your dad's in the federal government. Your dad was a senator for how many years? Like a zillion, okay? You should know this. You should know better. Your dad is going on to be the president of the United States. But no, not only do you not know better, you continue, continue, Hunter Biden, to kind of flaunt it in our faces. Because I'm sorry, like, look, it, maybe I'm not enough of an art aficionado to appreciate exactly why some of these paintings by Hunter Biden would be going for $1.3 million or $875,000 or why Prince would be going for $75,000 each. Art is very subjective, of course, so a perfect, perfect lane, right, if you want to actually move some money around. Sorry, I, I, it's just an amazing career choice and sudden shift in his career. And interesting that one of the people that was buying his art, actually, her, uh, her name is Elizabeth Nafali. Um, she actually wound up going to the White House repeatedly and then got like a big commission to help restore America's historical position overseas. This is also something that Corrine Jean-Pierre was asked about in today's session. Hear her response. Uh, Elizabeth Naftali, she's made more than a dozen visits here to the White House uh, and met with some of the president's uh, most senior advisors. Can you tell us a little bit more about those visits, why she was here? I would have to look into that. I've not, I've not been tracking the, these visits that you're uh, mentioning to me. No, oh, you may not be tracking them, but you know what? Some people are. Some people are, including The Real Deal, which is a real estate publication, a blog, and they're writing about it right now, saying that, you know, there's this L.A. real estate investor who was going back and forth to the White House and actually purchased some of Hunter's art. So it's one thing to have the whole pay-to-play allegation from 2018 before he was president of the United States, the dad. It's another thing when you start talking about whether or not there's anything at all for sale in the here and now, which is what these allegations or questions are now bringing up. Elizabeth Naftali, I mean, spending money on Hunter's art, getting a big plum commission position. I mean, come on, come on, come on. You know, this is bringing everything about impeachment, of course, once again, to the forefront, because everybody's saying, oh, OK, wait a second, we need more. House Oversight Committee has a lot of information that suggests, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And so people are saying, hey, we need more, we need more, we need more. And they want to look at having an impeachment trial. Well, McConnell would be the one, right, to kind of help spearhead this, to help lead this. But poor McConnell. 
Mitch McConnell, I- I'm actually worried about him. This is very scary what happened today. I want you to see if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, just know there's going to be silence for a while. We're here with you. But this is Mitch McConnell. You should feel it. You should hear it and feel it and see it if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. Mitch McConnell just really not being able to communicate. He absolutely froze And it's scary considering the guy recently fell. Remember the Waldorf Astoria hit his head? Alarming stuff. Watch. He says he's okay right now. But I'm just going to say, you know, this highlights in some ways the importance and the need for having younger politicians, younger people in office. I mean, poor Mitch McConnell's 81 years old, fell recently, Clearly not in the best of health. You got Joe Biden. He keeps falling every time he has to walk up the stairs of Air Force One. We got Nancy Pelosi. We've oh, Diane Feinstein, right? I mean, that, that was something. Took her a while to, to realize that, you know, maybe she wasn't in her prime or the staff around her. I mean, it, it goes on and on. And so there ought to be some level of competency, right, that you have to pass before you're actually there. I, I, I'm really worried about, I'm worried about him. I'm worried about a lot of these older folks. Listen, <laughs> term limits, age limits, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. But look, impeachment has got to be on the agenda now because more and more information is coming out that is causing people a lot of concern. You know what else is coming out is that Donald Trump is increasingly looking like he is going to be the Republican Party's nominee because Ron DeSantis, I'm sorry, but it's kind of looking like game over. I mean, I hate to say that so early on. And yes, anything can happen in politics, but it's like one hit after another. There was a recent poll, of course, that just came out showing how badly he's doing. Take a look. This is Morning Consult. If you look at this week's poll numbers, well, Trump is up four points. 59% of the Republican Party would vote for him today. DeSantis only getting 16%. And then there's Vivek Ramaswamy, who just came out of nowhere we got to talk more about Vivek. 8%. I mean, that is really quite something. Pence at 6%. Haley, 4%. Scott, 2%. Christy, 2%. And it goes so on and, and so forth. But one of the problems that Ron DeSantis is having, and there's a multitude of problems, one of which is that he just isn't necessarily that much of a people person, but he's trying to run to the right of Trump. Can you imagine running to the right of Trump? I just want, I I mean, think about that. Ron DeSantis is running to the right of Trump. And look, I don't think that's a winning strategy. I'm just going to say that. I think, in fact, if anything, it comes across as increasingly mean. And he's not running a good campaign. He's laying off a third of his staff, by the way, today. He's not running a good campaign. It's not a tightly run ship because they are putting out some horrifying, horrifying, and I'm going to caution Anybody who's watching this right now, like just, you know, this is not meant for kids in any way, shape or form. But like, this is one of the horrifying memes that it turns out his staff put out. There's a guy that like actually used to work for National Review. You'd think he'd know better. And there's some kind of Nazi symbolism at the end of this. I'm going to actually play it for you. I took the music out, but basically it's a montage of all the things that Trump didn't do well enough, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea here is somehow that, you know, DeSantis is going to be the more conservative savior. And it goes through this series of images. It shows DeSantis as the savior, you know, glowing light behind him in his military outfit. But the terrifying thing, and we're going to get to this, it's rather long. It goes for about 50, 50 seconds or so. The terrifying thing is at the end, there's actually a symbol that is associated with Nazi Germany. Now, why, why does Ron DeSantis have anyone working on his team that would ever put such a stupid asinine thing into a meme or commercial. I mean, it's not like this was made by some idiot out there. This was made by somebody who was working for Ron DeSantis. So one, who the heck is on your team? And two, why? There it is. There it is. Look, I don't even want my. What the heck is wrong with Ron DeSantis and his team that they would allow such a thing? And this is not the first time, you guys. This is not the first time. I'm sorry. What is he thinking? Not in this environment. You know what? We're divided enough. 
the reason a lot of people voted in 2016 for Trump was because he represented something different. And by the way, it wasn't hate. It was practicality. It was, hey, let's get our trade deficit under control. Let's bring jobs to middle class Americans. Let's make America great again. Not nonsense like that. So this is not the first time. Take a look at this commercial. This is what he ran, oh, just a couple of weeks ago. He actually defended it. And it was really, if you ask me, not very nice, very, very anti-gay. I mean, it, it, not, not good. I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens. If Caitlyn Jenner were to walk into Trump Tower, and want to use the bathroom, you would be fine with her using any bathroom she chooses. That is correct. In the future, can transgender women compete in Miss Universe? Yes. Make America great again. Spike! Okay, so here comes all the fancy music, the bum bum bum, and then you see him with the helicopter jets, after just saying basically like, oh my gosh, Trump is way too positive on the LGBTQ community and DeSantis is going to be the one to come in and save us. I mean, this is kind of weird. All right. Like wrong, wrong. Not the way you want to go, Ron DeSantis, and just sit there and then defend it. So that's your idea. That's your strategy. You're just going to be meaner. <laughs> Like, you're going to be more? Uh, no, the strategy, I'm telling you what the winning strategy is. One, to be more likable, more fun, better on stage, more accessible, and to have some real concrete economic ideas. Look, the guy did a good job in Florida, right? I'm going to give him that. He kept Florida open. That is something he can ride from here to Sunday and, and back again. Focus on policy, not on stuff that, well, frankly, I, I think could be considered quite hateful, quite hateful. All right. You know, we, we've talked a lot about inflation. Um, inflation's here. In fact, it's still up 16% from when Donald Trump left office. Joe Biden's not winning on this inflation thing. And even though he tries to talk a good game, say, hey, you know, it's coming down, it's coming down. It's really not coming down because again, up 16% from where it was. So even if we're only up, you know, 4% right now, and that feels like it's coming down because it used to be up 11%. The reality is we are still in a much worse place than we were. And the Fed knows it. That's why they raised rates again today, a quarter of a point. We are now at the highest interest rate level we have been in since 2001. I've talked a lot with Charles Thorngrad, one of the sponsors of this show from Legacy Precious Metals, about this very issue. And one of the things that Charles points out is his concern about whether or not the bank balance sheets are really going to be healthy enough as we see all these interest rates reset so it's perhaps another reason why you might be reminded to diversify your holdings, diversify your portfolio. If you're interested in investing in gold or silver, go check them out at Legacy Precious Metals, 1-866-589-0560, LegacyPMInvestments.com. That is the name of the company. And before I let you go, <laughs> before I let you go, did you see? I know this is crazy. Okay, I know it's crazy. I, 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 I know it's nuts, but, you know, you get David Gersh, Grush, um, being kind of, um, uh, well, they, well, he used to work for the Pentagon and he's somebody who is um, uh, very, very well respected, but he's talking about aliens, like those UFOs. They actually might be more than you think. And I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy, but hear him out because this is testimony on Capitol Hill today. I mean, just when you think you can't get any crazier. Oh, can we hear her? Can we hear her? We're not hearing her. Let me see if I can try this again for you guys. This is how you know we're live, right? There we uh, go. Biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. You can see Mace is like, wait a second, how exactly do I ask these questions? Because Grush is talking about the potential for like dead alien pilots that the U.S. government may or may not have recovered. Weird, weird, weird. I know it's weird, but go listen to my whole interview with the astrophysics department chair at Harvard. That would be Avi Loeb, who's got some pretty compelling thoughts on all of this right now. Um, it is pretty crazy. And hey, one more thing before I let you go. 
this didn't completely play out in yesterday's program because it turned out I couldn't use the soccer video because FIFA has all these rules against using it. You know, it's a copyright thing. But I just wanted to give a plug for my little cousin, 16 years old, who just made history, ladies and gentlemen. This is Casey Fair. Casey Fair, um, you know, she's 16 years in a couple days. And, you know, I remember holding her when she was a baby and her parents told us she was really good at soccer. And it turns out she's really good at soccer because she just became the world's youngest player in the World Cup. My cousin, Casey Fair, uh, her her father's like a brother to me. We grew up in New Hampshire together. Casey spent a lot of time in New Hampshire as well. She's been training in New Jersey. She's playing actually for South Korea, but she's a wonderful patriot. Her mom is from South Korea, her dad from New Hampshire. And I just want to say, go Casey. We are so proud of you. We are so proud of this wonderful little girl who has worked so hard. Her parents have given up so much to make this dream come true. I'm going to get all teary-eyed again because I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud of her. Um, you heard me yesterday a little bit, but we had to take it down because, you know, the copyright issues. But that's my cousin. I love her very much, and I, I just am thrilled. I want to remind you, please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Go check out the Apple podcast and I will see you here right back here tomorrow. Have a good one, everyone.